Well, honey varmints, have you been scouring the internet looking for eye spindle assembly instructions? Well, look no further, because Joey Jojo Jr. has got you covered. Yee-haw! <laughs> Welcome to Open Source Distilling, where time-honored tradition meets modern-day technology. Please consider subscribing to follow my progress on building a fully robotic reflux still running on open source technology. Today, we're going to be assembling an eye spindle using the eye spindle 4.0 printed circuit board from PCBWay. Affiliate links for all these products can be found in the description of this video down below, as well as my blog post on opensourcedistilling.com. Before I solder each component on, I'll flash it up on the screen and highlight the area that I'm going to solder with some little red dots. So let's hop into it and start by soldering in six posts as seen up on the screen. I use the breadboard here to hold two of the posts and the uh, other sets of two just kind of plugged in and were able to basically be held up by friction for me to solder them. You want to get these as straight as possible as they're going to accept the lithium ion battery charger component later on. Next up, we have a four, a three, and a one post to solder into the circuit board. Second verse, same as the first. Put these into the breadboard first and put the circuit board on top and solder in place. I use a pH test strip container to get everything just level and get it just right. Next up is the off on switch for the eye spindle. These guys are small and slippery. Uh, just get it into place however you can and then solder it into place as shown. The next four block is a little bit special as it's going to be soldered right where the battery holder is going to be put. So we want to push these pins down a little bit to make them stubby and short so we uh, don't artificially elevate the battery holder that's going to be placed on top. Now we're going to put in the resistors and the diode. We're using a BAT43 diode and for the resistors it's a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor and we're supposed to use a 230k ohm resistor as well. My local electronics store didn't have a 230 kilo ohm resistor so I ended up going with a 220 kilo ohm and a 10 kilo ohm resistor and I just solder those together and put them in place as shown. Please keep in mind that the diode is directional and that the resistors are not. So when you install the diode, make sure the line on the diode lines up with the line on the circuit board. Very important. This is probably a good time to mention that when I filmed this, I hadn't eaten that day and I drank like a pot of coffee. So if you're wondering why I'm so shaky, there you have it. Up next is the lithium ion battery charger. I was able to score a USB-C style charger off the internet, which I would recommend. I mean, USB-C is the future. Now, when you try and put this on, unlike some of the other components, these posts just aren't going to line up for whatever reason. So you're just going to have to struggle through, uh, bend them a little bit and get them to line up and just kind of, you know, lightly force them in and solder them in place. On to the reset pins. We're going to solder these in and optionally you can trim them down if you like. Now 
it's time to install the temperature probe, which is a DS18B20. This is going to be similar to installing the four block that we put in for the gyroscope. We want to make sure that the wires don't poke through the circuit board too much as it's going to impose on the space for the battery holder on the other side. So try and solder this in as, as flat as possible. Speaking of the four block for the gyroscope, next we'll remove the plastic risers as shown on screen. This gyroscope actually has a small LED built in and we're gonna remove it as it provides absolutely no functionality and you really don't wanna be shining light into your fermentables anyways. Once the LED has been removed, we're gonna solder this gyroscope in place. I'm gonna suggest that you solder one post at the top end first and then solder the second post down below. This will enable you to heat up one of those posts and kind of uh, position it so it lines up with the markings on the printed circuit board. This is a gyroscope and it can tell its uh, orientation, so we do want to make sure that everything is straight and level in accordance with what's printed on the circuit board. Now we are on to the battery holders. Now, like a dumbass, I actually bought surface mounted battery holders instead of the printed circuit board mounted battery holders. This caused all sorts of issues as we'll see later on, but I ended up modifying mine, bending it backwards, and that creates like a gap. And as we'll see, uh, creates another issue that we solve later on. So do as I say, not as I do. Make sure you buy the right parts. I'll include links down below and uh, also links in the blog post to the correct components that I should have bought in the first place. On to the brains of the operation, the D1 Mini. It's best practice when soldering to always try and approach the solder point from the outside ledge of the component. You want to avoid heating up electrical components unless you absolutely have to. I trim up the post next and be really careful here. These posts are pointy on the end and when I was clipping them I actually drew some blood. And for whatever reason this one that I was filming uh, it was really hard to cut these posts, harder than any of the ones I built off screen. So please take care when working around sharp things. Because I used the wrong battery holder, when I put everything together and tried to fit it in the container, it did not fit. The battery holder was slightly elevated by a few millimeters, and that was just enough that it wouldn't fit in to the tube. Right or wrong, I decided to grab my Dremel and shave down the sides. Now given that the Dremel creates a lot of vibration, it probably would have been better if I used a hand file, which is what I'm going to recommend to you guys. So again, don't do as I do, do as I say. If you need to shave down the circuit board a bit, use a hand file, go slow, and take good care. And here we are at the end with all five completed eye spindles. I'm going through and charging them up one by one, and in the next video, we will be flashing them with the firmware. Stay tuned for future videos where we'll be calibrating these guys and putting them to the test. How accurate are they, and how well will they tie into each other? One of the experiments I'll be doing is putting all five into the same fermentation bucket and see what the result is. Thanks for watching this video, and of course, if you guys have any questions, make sure you post them in the comments down below. Also, if you're using an eye spindle or a tilt, please let me know what your experience is with those products. I'd be interested to know. Thank you for making it to the end of this video. Hit that like button, that subscribe button, that bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. <gasps> I love you all very much. <laughs>